Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my honor to rise this evening in adjournment proceedings to pursue a question that I initially asked uh, earlier in September of this fall, and it deals with the issue of Canada's greenhouse gas record. Are emissions rising or are they falling? And I, th I think these adjournment proceedings, giving us more time, do allow for something of a tutorial. I'm going to start, actually, by reading my full question and then reading the answer I received, and that gives us a, a framework to explain why I want to come back to this point, because I think it is important, and I want to make it very clear that I believe that all members of this place want to get full information and deal with numbers that are accurate. So what I asked initially, and I'll, I'll paraphrase it slightly, was that I heard in an answer in question period, before I asked my question on September 22nd, I heard the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment, who I see is in the House tonight, and a good friend, that he had said that greenhouse gas levels are falling. And then he said that that led to a significant reduction in greenhouse gas levels. What I said was, if the Prime Minister's office had consulted the Environment Canada website, it would know that neither of those statements is correct. Greenhouse gas levels have been rising steadily since the end of the recession and are slated to end at 734 megatons by 2020, which is less than one half of 1% below the 2005 levels that the Prime Minister had committed would be reduced by 17%. And what I asked the Parliamentary Secretary was to, to find out if the Prime Minister's office would check Environment Canada's website before writing the talking points to be used by Conservative Parliamentary Secretaries and Ministers. Now, my honourable colleague, the Parliamentary Secretary, said that since, two quote, since 2005, Canadian greenhouse gas emissions have decreased 5.1 per cent, while the economy has grown by 10.6 per cent. Now, here's what I want to put to you, Mr. Speaker. Both statements are correct. One is an attempt to explain, and one is an attempt to confuse. My statement, I believe, was the one to explain, and the talking points from the Prime Minister's office were designed to confuse. So let me explain. Greenhouse gas levels in Canada fell to a low point right during the recession. And after the recession, 2009, greenhouse gas levels fell below 700 megatons, fell to 692 megatons. That's the lowest they'd been in some time. Now, what happened was, as soon as the recession was over, greenhouse gas levels have been rising. They've been rising ever since 2009. So when I hear honorable colleagues say they are falling, are falling is a statement that would lead Canadians to believe that they were currently falling. Now, in terms of the actions of this Conservative administration, I really do not believe the Prime Minister wants to take personal credit for the economic meltdown of 2008, nor do I believe he had any responsibility for it. Yet that is the reason greenhouse gas levels went as low as they did in 2009. Ever since then, as the economy has recovered, greenhouse gas levels have been rising and are slated to go from, as I said, around 692 megatons in 2009, they are steadily rising and are slated to be at 734 megatons by 2020. And that means we will completely blow the so-called Copenhagen target. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Mr. President, the bilan de notre gouvernement est clair. Nous avons pris des mesures décisives sur l'environnement tout en maintenant une économie forte. Through our sector-by-sector -sector regulatory approach, we have already taken action on some of Canada's largest sources of greenhouse gas emissions, including the coal-fired electricity and transportation sectors. As a result of regulatory measures, Canada became the first major coal user to ban the construction of traditional coal-fired electricity generation units. Canada already has one of the cleanest electricity systems in the world, with more than three-quarters of electricity in Canada being generated from non-greenhouse gas-emitting sources such as hydro, nuclear, and renewables. Canada's system will be even cleaner. Emissions, uh, sorry, with the stringent new regulations, Mr. Speaker, Canada's system will be even cleaner. Emissions in the electricity sector are expected to fall by 46% by 2030 compared to 2005 levels. 
En ce qui concerne le secteur des transports, nous avons annoncé en septembre, en septembre que notre gouvernement procède à mise en œuvre d'initiatives supplémentaires pour couper la pollution atmosphérique et réduire les émissions de gaz à effet de serre provenant d'automobiles et de, de camions. Ces mesures nous permettront de réduire davantage les émissions, les émissions de gaz à effet de serre et d'assainir l'air de, des Canadiens et des Canadiennes. En, en raison des de mesures gouvernem, gouvernementales dans le secteur de tra, des transports, les véhicules à passagers et les camionnettes construits et vendus en 2025 émettront environ la moitié des émissions de gaz à effet de serre des modèles de 2008 et les émissions modèles de véhicules lourds en, euh, de 2018 seront réduites de jusqu'à 23 Our government is also taking action on climate change in other areas. Last month, we announced that Canada will move forward to regulate hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs, which are potent greenhouse gases. Canada will be aligning these new regulations with regulations proposed by the United States. In doing, doing so, we will be taking preemptive steps to reduce and limit harmful HFC emissions. Our approach to climate change protects the environment and supports economic prosperity. Indeed, Canada's greenhouse gas emissions have been falling and the economy has been expanding. As reported in Canada's National Inventory Report, between 2005 and 2012, total Canadian greenhouse gas emissions decreased by 5.1 percent, while the economy grew by 10.6 percent. More recently, emissions have remained steady since 2010, while Canada has seen economic growth of 4.4 percent over the same period. Furthermore, Canada's per capita emissions are now at their lowest point since tracking began in 1990. Mr. Speaker, our government is working to ensure that we achieve results for Canadians and the environment. Our approach will lead to real emissions reductions, maintain Canada's economic competitiveness, and support job creation opportunities for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know where to begin because now we've heard it again. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary says greenhouse gas levels have been falling when the opposite is the case. Ever since the economic recovery began after the 2008 meltdown, greenhouse gas levels in this country have been rising. That is clear on any chart or graph that one examines on the Environment Canada website. They're on their way up, not down. And throwing in per capita measures is merely a shell game. The population of Canada is larger, so per person one can say that our emissions are lower. But the reality is that per capita we're one of the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitters, and that's nothing to be proud of. It's time to stop the Enron accounting. It's time to pay attention to the warning of scientists. We need a comprehensive plan that tracks Canada to reduce emissions substantially before mid-century, to leave a lot of hydrocarbons in the ground as is required by science, and ensure our children have a livable world before it's too late. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Climate change is a significant challenge facing all countries, and Canada is doing its part to address this challenge. As a result of collective action by Canadian governments, consumers and businesses, Canada's 2020 greenhouse gas emissions are projected to be about 130 megatons lower relative to a scenario where no action was taken since 2005. We recognize that more work is needed to lower greenhouse gas emissions. Federal initiatives, along with further provincial measures, will contribute additional emissions reductions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 